Mark Cuban's got it all wrong. All wrong about where the power in media is. And if you want to call Fox News mainstream media, you can. You cannot engage the idea that conservatives control media. Well, they control talk radio. No, no, no. They're the only ones who are profitable on talk radio. That's, that's the issue there. Don't look at talk radio and say it's conservative dominated. It's dominated by sports. There's an entire urban sector that takes place. But the actual talk part happens to be worthwhile and work for conservatives because they're putting out content that's actually interesting. And the left doesn't. But if we're talking about where media is able to gather massive strength and has a massive reach and shapes opinion and narrative, well, that's all on the political left. And Mark Cuban of Shark Tank has it wrong. Tony Katz. Tony Katz today. Good to be with you. Find everything I do over at TonyKatz.com. This was Mark Cuban over there on CNBC. What's the most watched news channel? Who are the most watched and viewed and listened to podcasts? Who are the most watched and listened to? Or Is it viewed? Fox? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, it's not close. Right. The number one shows are all Fox. The number one podcast. So in, right. Even in spite bigger, of that, she's been able to. Not in spite of that. Meaning, well, in spite of that. Yeah. yeah okay. Meaning the mainstream media is not who you think it is. The mainstream media truly leans right. Maybe. Every part about that is wrong. The mainstream media does not lean right. If we are to take a look at podcasts, right? To which, by the way, Tony Katz today, you can download that wherever it is you get your podcasts. Why it isn't a top podcast in America is clearly anti-Semitism. No? Yes? No. Can I get a ruling? No, it's not. It's not? Are, you, uh, are you sure? What about racism? Can I, can I just decide that it's racism? I mean, it, that racism seems to get you a lot more than just uh, anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, that only get you into Colombia. But, but, but racism, racism might actually get you, might get you what you, what you want. It's, so it's, it's not racism. It's not anti-Semitism. You're a little bit racist. Well, you're a little bit too. I guess we're both a little bit racist. All right, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, But that's today. Tomorrow, we may be amongst the most popular podcasts in America. The most popular podcasts in America come from the New York Times and NPR and, and, and True Crime. Dear Lord, the audio chuck people. Bravo. I don't I I do not get true crime. I do not understand it. It is not for me. Um, But clearly, true crime podcasts are the Danielle Steele novels of today. That's what they are, and it works, and I'm not here to mock it. I'm here to stand in awe of it and say, well done and well played. Well played, good work. The podcasts are not conservative. You're talking about Shapiro, Bongino, uh, Levin. Yeah, they get an audience. Good. I'm glad they do. You want to talk about Fox News and the Fox News audience? Yeah. They get an audience. Good. I'm glad. And yes, if you want to compare them in the ratings, those shows very often are in the top three and sometimes number one. Only somebody who is willfully ignorant, which is to say unwilling to take a look at the whole board. It's searching for Bobby Fischer. Don't move until you see it. You got to see the whole board, ladies and gentlemen. Only the person narrow casting, only the person focused in on Fox or focused in on, on a couple of podcasts would think that conservatives dominate. Mark Cuban is failing to recognize something that we've discussed here repeatedly, which is the long tail. Mark Cuban is failing to take a look at what the totality is. Amazon, and and this this was true a a few years ago, quite a few years ago. I don't know if it's as true today, but the theory remains very, very poignant for the conversation. Amazon sells more books of what didn't necessarily sell yesterday than anything that sells today. I'm screwing that up left and right. Let me say it a better way. If I take a look at the best seller on Amazon, and we're going to use 
round numbers just for our conversation. And let's say it sold a thousand copies. But there are 10,000 books that you've never heard of that only sold one copy. What did better? That's the long tail. So take take it, you know, X, Y axis and start at the top there and then just scoop down and just draw the line out on the X. And that's the long tail. All of these little things taking place, all these little transactions taking place when added together, clearly surmounting whatever it is that sold the most on that day. Now apply this to podcasts. You mentioned two or three conservative uh, podcasts. Shapiro, Bongino, Tony Katz, which you can get at your favorite podcast platform, Tony Katz today. Be sure to download it. See what I did there? Yeah, a lot of views. Now take a look at all the left-leaning podcasts that may exist and ask yourself how it compares. And you forget to mention in that list of things that are popular, the New York Times and NPR, not on the political right. So while there are podcasts on the political right that are successful, to say that that is a domination of media is farcical. Now let's take a look at Fox News as a whole. If we are to argue that Fox News is the leader in cable news, that could be seen as accurate. But if we were to take a look at all the rest of the competition, CNN and MSNBC and ABC and NBC and CBS and CNBC, and then the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times, and then all of those smaller newspapers, the Philadelphia Inquirer, whatever they got in Oregon, and, and whatever they got out of coming out of Minnesota. And then you add all of that together. Where's the bigger audience? Mark Cuban is either being purposeful here in avoiding the reality or never once asked himself whether or not this holds true. The observing of an act the observing of a phenomenon doesn't mean that that is the totality of the conversation. Well, I see uh, that uh, Fox News is always a number one in cable news, so therefore they're the biggest in their mainstream media. You can argue that they're mainstream media. You cannot argue that they are the most definitive in influencing a narrative. That distinction goes to the political left, which controls everything else. Of course, the Newsmax people uh, would, would not appreciate me not mentioning them and their growing audience, which it is. And I'm, I'm happy uh, for them. And I do some work over there and it's, it's enjoyable. Um, News Nation, uh, they're, they're certainly trying to put their imprint down in a little bit of, of a different way. I wish them well on that. But do not fall for this conversation that Mark Cuban's having. It is a miss. It's a miss to say that I gave a compliment to right-leaning media. You are now the MSM. The biggest TV news shows are on Fox. The top 10 podcasts have a bunch of right-leaning shows. Sinclair owns more TV stations than anyone. Salem, all right-leaning. iHeart's biggest syndicated shows, all conservative. Yes, great. My gosh, purposeful missing the mark. If it was the case, you would think there would be more impact on culture. It's coming. It's slowly building. And you have to have more than these things. You have to have more than this. You have to have books. You have to have music. You have to have uh, film. You have to have theater. You have to have art. Let me write the ballads of a nation. I care not who makes the laws. What is that, Plato? Right? Culture moves things. So... With that, big mistake from Mark Cuban. It's, it's either a purposeful failure or wanton failure to recognize. As for not recognizing, I guess Letitia James didn't realize that she went at, when she went after Trump for not doing anything wrong and working with this judge, Judge, judge Ergeron, Engeron, to issue this $454 million fine. I guess she never thought about the fact that there would be an appeal. She was so busy cheerleading herself. Letitia James, the attorney general of New York, so busy 
putting herself out there as look what I did. After all, she campaigned on this. Letitia James campaigned on the idea that she was going to go after Donald Trump. Won an election by saying, as an elected official, I'm going to target a citizen. That, that got her votes. Can't deny it. She brings this lawsuit saying, you got favorable terms on loans from banks. I'm sorry, what? You got favorable terms because you said your properties were worth this and they were worth less than that. And you said your net worth was this and it was worth less than that. And you lied. Uh, I, I applied for a loan. And the bank said, how much money would you like, Mr. Trump? And then they brought this wheelbarrow and they dumped a bunch of money. And then they brought another wheelbarrow, another wheelbarrow. They had so many wheelbarrows. I should really be investing in wheelbarrows. And, and they said, here's the money. Uh, pay us back any time. Thank you, Mr. Trump. And they all said, thank you, Mr. Trump, because they're all very thankful that they got to do business with me, Mr. Trump. That's what happened. The banks lent the money, even if it was at a lower interest rate. Trump paid back all the money. There was no crime ever. And if you say to me, the crime was that Trump inflated his value. Well, if the crime is inflating your value, a lot of people are going to jail today. But by dinner time, you know what? By this time tomorrow, we might take a little time. Everybody's going to be in jail. Inflating your value? The bank is responsible for doing its due diligence. And the bank said yes. You know why? Because the bank wanted to say, oh, yeah, we, we did the last project with Donald Trump. Oh, that, we, his friends call him Donald. You know, you know how that goes. They all wanted to say that. There was no crime. Yet this judge and Gron puts up a $454 million fine plus interest. And Letitia James is like, look at me. Look what I did. I got that Trump, that no good so-and-so. I'm assuming she sang a song. Well, now it's in front of an appellate court. And the appeals court is asking a question. What's wrong with you people? Justice Peter Moulton saying, the immense penalty in this case is troubling. And asking um, the attorney general's lawyer, the deputy solicitor general, Judith Vail, asking Judith Vail, how do you tether the amount that was assessed by the Supreme Court to the harm that was caused here when the parties left these transactions happy? Translation, the bank never thought they had a bad deal. The bank was thrilled to do business with them. Why are you fining this guy $454 million, you freaks? And uh, and uh, the the response from the deputy solicitor general of New York is is, is basically um, we we thought the number was cute. Basically, the uh, the the response these justices, this five member panel of appellate justices, are not impressed with what it is Letitia James has done here. And you get the feel from some of the arguments that took place that they are very, very interested, although it doesn't happen until it happens, very interested in overturning. Overturning is the right thing to do. But then we have to ask whether or not Letitia James is somebody who should be allowed to practice law. Letitia James, we should be looking at disbarring her. It's a total manipulation of the system, a total abuse of the system. She ran for office discussing targeting a citizen and then did it. Why would you allow her to be AG? Why would you allow her to practice law? I would ask, uh, don't you lawyers have any shame? (laughs) But Come on, stop it. Stop it. I would tell the full joke, but I might need those lawyers one day. I, you know. I should try and keep some friends. I hope it's overturned and overturned quickly. I truly, truly do. Tony Katz, Tony Katz today. We'll be right back.